Hi, I'm Tara Grabazon. I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University and welcome to Vlog 54, Understanding Feedback. This is part two of two vlog requests that came from Michelle. As you may remember, last week was how to create a stellar seminar. But the second one, understanding feedback, is perhaps even more important. And I wonder, Michelle, if you realise how incredibly important this topic was. It's been incredibly influential for me, and I'm really grateful for this suggestion, because during this week, early one of my mornings, one of my early morning writing sessions, this vlog appeared to come in one piece. But it was a bit naughty. It was a bit funny. And in fact, I called it 50 Shades of Feedback. But we don't really do naughty and funny in these vlogs, do we? So what I've decided to do is that first version, the first iteration of this vlog, I've made into a Times Higher Education article. And instead, in the vlog this week, I'm trying to be much more concrete with a how-to guide about how to manage feedback. So what we're particularly focusing on is after a seminar, what you do with the feedback that has been given to you, how you manage it, how you control it, how you improve your research. But obviously this is not only of use in a doctoral program, but your entire academic and indeed professional career after the PhD. So I've got five particular strategies and ideas that I'd like to talk with you this week that I believe are the foundation of understanding and managing feedback. So ladies and gentlemen, here we go with the first variable that I think is really the most important variable to consider when we're dealing with feedback, and that is so important, create an environment of cultural safety. The first point is very important to me personally and also very important to me professionally because I want the best for you. I want a higher education system, a public and a private sector that deserves you, that deserves your expertise, your intelligence, your brilliance, your compassion. And for me, there is always one deal breaker in feedback, and I've seen it far too often in seminars and in conferences around the world. And I'm talking about, in the feedback session, seeing racism, sexism, homophobia, misogyny, xenophobia of many different types. And you know what? It's always unacceptable. It's always unacceptable. What we see too often in university life is playing the man or playing the woman rather than playing the ball. So instead of engaging with ideas and scholarship and argument, it's supposedly much easier to simply abuse the person for being gay or lesbian or black or a woman. And particularly I find it disturbing, I find it disturbing in the entirety of my academic life, but I get particularly concerned and worried and upset when I see this stuff targeted towards our PhD students, some of the most vulnerable and disempowered members of our academic community. So what I ask of you from today is that every single one of us, if we're in a seminar, if we're in a milestone meeting, and we see something like a racist, xenophobic, misogynist outburst, that we call that behaviour out. We do not allow the master's student or the PhD student to simply be a victim and sit back and take it. That all of us, as an academic community, intervene and make this situation better. So this exists everywhere, but again, it is particularly targeted against PhD students because you all can't fight back. So let me give you an example that's recently emerged in our household, and you can see how serious this situation is if we don't call out this type of feedback. So my beautiful, wonderful husband, Professor Steve Redhead, was brought in as an external examiner for a British PhD a couple of weeks ago after the first examiner went completely bonkers in the oral exam, abusing the supervisor and sexually abusing the student. Sexism simply tumbled out of his mouth. 
The situation was so serious that the oral examination and the examination more broadly was declared null and void. And they had to bring in somebody, a very senior academic with credibility, but also with compassion to try and ensure a quality examination process, but to also mop up the damage that had been done to this fantastic female PhD student. So Steve was brought in to do that work. So yes, this emerges in the most basic and simple of seminars that we see internally in a university, but it can emerge right the way through to the end examination of your PhD. So any personal attacks that are masked by academic freedom are not acceptable. So let's make a decision today, today, that we slice this bad behaviour out of academic life. This means so much to me, as you can see, because I've seen some of the most brilliant and remarkable people on this planet destroyed and humiliated by feedback in seminars to such a scale that they simply packed up their desk into a cardboard box and put it in the back of their car and never returned to a PhD program again. So never think this is minor, this is a slight. This can be transformative of somebody's life. So please remember, if anything gets personal in a seminar or in a conference, call out that behavior. And if you're too frightened, just talk about it with your mentors, your supervisors, or with me. Oppression blooms through silence. Oppression blooms through silence. Two, important one, use the feedback that is only appropriate to you and to your project. Some of the nastiest feedback we ever receive in our academic life comes while we're enrolled in a PhD program. What actually happens is scholars offer you feedback, but they offer it in a way that is described as what they would do on the project rather than offering you feedback on yours. So instead of actually saying, look, that's a great project. Have you thought about maybe adding these particular elements to it? That's great. That's good feedback. But instead they go, look, I think that's not really going to work. What you really need to do is, and so they actually tell you what you should be doing for your project. Now, there's always gonna be plenty of people who are terribly confident and would like to tell you what you need to do with your life. But what I want you to do is also be confident, stand in and stand for what your research is doing, your method, your approach. Therefore, when an academic says to you, oh look, I will, I'd do this, I would take this approach, I would do this, thank them, but only take the information and the ideas that enhance your project. Don't lose your project to somebody else's ideas. Don't become a guest star in your own PhD project. So I'll give you an example from this, me as a supervisor, me as an examiner in particular, in my sort of fields. Whenever I see Bourdieu or I see Foucault mentioned, I know that this is going to be a lower quality PhD. I just know that, that we haven't quite got the theorists in place to create a more complicated understanding of the political economy. Now I know that, but I'm not going to say that in a seminar. I'm not going to call that out in an examination because what I think about your project, what I would have done in your project is actually irrelevant. As an assessor, as an examiner, I am assessing you and your project on its own terms. I'm not assessing what I would have done. So therefore, always filter the feedback that you receive to ensure it enhances your project rather than you simply losing your project and going in another direction. Feedback shouldn't be offered in that way. Three, don't be defensive. It's incredibly difficult when you get a draft returned from your supervisor that's covered in red track changes or you're in a seminar and somebody shreds you up in the question time. It's very hard to recover and maintain your confidence and it's very easy to behave defensively. You know, oh, they're just wrong and I'm right. 
defensiveness. Now, receiving negative feedback is always unsettling, it's always disturbing, and it really appears to cut up your sense of self. Now, one way to handle this, and this involves your supervisors, is in a seminar situation, during the question time when feedback is being offered, the student, you, simply focus on answering the question in analog real time. So don't overthink the questions, just hear it and answer it with clarity. Your supervisors, however, will write that question down, write that feedback down and allow them to guide you through the feedback about what is useful and what is not useful. So it's mediated and mitigated to a certain point. So it's not this ruthless attack with all your emotions involved. Let your supervisors just manage and shape that feedback and talk about it in a really honest and clear way. So don't assume that you're always right, because you're not, and don't assume you're always wrong, because you're not. Instead, what I want us all to do is work through every stage of feedback and see, right, well, that's of use and that's not of use. Be clear, be sure of how you are going to apply that feedback. Now, this stuff's often bundled into the phrase constructive criticism. And it is a bit of a cliche. And you know what? It's really sad that it's a cliche because it is the criticism that constructs a better argument, the criticism that constructs a better PhD and better research. And the wonderful Stephen Stern, who I adore as a scholar and a writer, he offers fantastic advice, which I actually have this statement up on my upstairs office. And he stated, quote, know why your work is important. Know why your work is important and hold on to that realization and recognize that really strong feedback renders your research more important. And that's what we want. Four, again, really important one. Separate you from your work. Separate you from your work. In a PhD, we always have a tendency to, the PhD is me, I'm the PhD, and it all becomes a bit blurred. What I want for you is you have a good, clear sense of yourself as a scholar, as a person, but also you have a sense of that is my PhD over there. I am working on that. That PhD is not me. So that means the critiques that you receive are not about you, they're about the work over there. So what I want you to do is start to log the critiques, take a breath, take a break, go for a walk, use your supervisors, and then start to apply the useful feedback to your work. It's not about you, it's about your work, it's different. And also remember, you are a master's student. You are a PhD student. You have a right to learn in a culturally safe environment. You are learning. You're not meant to know everything. You are learning. And also, you are not your research. You were a whole and complete person before you came to a PhD program, and you're a whole and complete person when you leave the PhD program. The difference is you just have a PhD. I always, say, always remember a great supervisor once wrote to their student after they'd received some pretty aggressive feedback, but also an acknowledgement about how great their research was. And the supervisor asked the student, why does every win in academic life have the sting of defeat? End of quote. That's truly brilliant, I think. And the key is always to celebrate the win and to park the sting. Too often I think if I'm offering personal reflection on my very long academic life, I think it would be that I haven't celebrated the wins enough. You know, every two or three days something fantastic happens to me and I go, that's great, and then move to the next thing. So what I want for you is celebrate the wins a lot more and park the stings. Five, <laughs> know who to ignore. Everyone has an opinion. And everyone wants to appear important and influential. It's the Kath and Kim effect. Look at me, look at me, look at me. We see this particularly in Australian academic life. 
Always I do in my own personal life, I look at the person offering the feedback and particularly I assess their career. So when anyone's talking to me with feedback, I actually digitally understand their career and see if they have the expertise to be offering a commentary to me. You might want to do the same. But what I want for you is to have a group of people around you who you trust, who you do listen to. They're the people who will not only offer great commentary and feedback on your research, but also provide incredible advice for the entirety of your career. So I'll give you an example of this. When I'm picking examiners for my students, and five of my students are submitting in the next four weeks, so you can imagine, but when I'm picking examiners for my students, I look at the best scholars in the world every time, but I also assess their temperament. So if I have any sense that the scholar is envious or not supportive of the next generation of scholars, then no matter how good they are and how high their citation rate is, I will not allow them to examine my students because it's just not worth the risk. It's not worth the risk to their career. So what I want for all of you is that you find five people in your life who will always be in your corner, who will offer you feedback with your best interests at heart, that their feedback is not coming from vanity or jealousy or self-interest. So always thank the people who are offering you feedback. You can either take on the feedback or you can ignore it. But always remember that the feedback you can get during a doctoral program, particularly through the milestones process, can be incredibly useful. Because if someone provides you with feedback early on about an error you might be about to make, that saves the examiners finding it later on. So very importantly, try and engage with that constructive criticism. So feedback is useful. It improves your scholarship. It does improve your research. But what I would ask is always remember to celebrate the small win. And through feedback, that small win can become the big win. I wish you love, light and peace. Tia.